Hi, my name is Silas, um, and I'm going to show you how to play my game, Hurting Home, version 6. So, to start, you need to do a little inventory check. Um, especially because we're playing on Tabletop Simulator, it's important for you to make sure that all your pieces are the correct color. So, there's a common error where sometimes your pieces will not show up um, in the color that they're supposed to be. And in this game, it matters. So just do a quick check and make sure you have uh, here, you have a gray pawn, a gray dice, and a little gray counter, a black pawn, black dice, black counter, um, an orange one for each of them, and a blue one for each of them. And then also you should have 15 white pawns, one red pawn, four uh, white dice and one more little red one here um, and then after that I've already set up the board um, but you need to start with setup so you will need to put the white pawns which indicate the sheep in these little spaces I've lifted it here so you can see uh, they are indicated with little plus marks and so you need to put them where they go and put the shepherd where it goes which is right on this little flower icon right here. Now the wolves need to place their pawns on the board and they place them simultaneously. And um, wolves need to be uh, within five spaces of a sheep. So if we go here on this sheep, we count one, two, three, four, five. This would be the fifth space from the sheep. So we can place our wolf here at the sixth space from the sheep. Then from here, you just put the rest of your wolves anywhere on the board that is pale colored. So you couldn't put it on any of these dark green spots. Those are scenery and the wolves cannot walk there. So the shepherd controls all 15 sheep plus their shepherd pawn. And one player plays two wolves of any color you like and the other player plays the other two wolves of any color they like. And throughout the game, the wolves will always move simultaneously. So the wolves go first simultaneously, then the shepherd goes. Diagonal movement is not allowed for any of the pawns. However, you can split your movement into different directions. So if you roll a three, you can take this sheep and go one, two, three, as opposed to simply going one, two, three. None of the pawns may move through each other. Um, this includes the sheep, sheep, wolves, all of them. And all players must use all of their rolls. So for the shepherd, this means rolling all five of your dice. So your four sheep dice and your one shepherd. Um, and moving up to, but no more than, four sheep and your shepherd in your turn along the path. So the shepherd and the sheep can only stick along this pale yellow path. Your goal is to get to the barn right here to get all your sheep in safely. Um, the shepherd has to get all of their available sheep into the barn before that they can go in themselves. It's also important to note that pawns cannot occupy the same space, except for in the case when, say, a wolf is eating a sheep. Um, because to eat a sheep, the wolf has to land on that sheep's space. So the occupation, the double occupation is temporary, so it doesn't really matter. So here are the wolves' winning condition. Um, the wolves can win either by killing sheep, um, Basically, once this graveyard is full, so all eight spots, once they're full, then the game is, is over for the shepherd and the wolves win. Or the wolves can team up and kill the shepherd, in this case, by surrounding them like this. Now, the shepherd's win conditions are to reach this barn as I said before, you must take all of your sheep into the barn first, 
before the shepherd goes inside. So all available sheep that are still on the board must be inside of the barn and safe before the shepherd can go in themselves. The shepherd has some abilities, um, such as hitting a wolf on the head to protect their herd. So in this case, if we see this little wolf here, he's right next to the shepherd. The shepherd can sacrifice one roll's worth of movement um, to bonk this little wolf on the head, and the wolf is then stunned for the next turn, so it skips the wolf's turn. This can be used as many times as you have available rolls, but there's also a rule that you can't use, you can't bonk one wolf more than one time in one turn. So you couldn't bonk this little wolf four times. You would have to use it somehow to go bonk these other wolves. The sheep also have their own sort of special ability, abilities, which is herd immunity. So if three or more sheep are directly adjacent to each other, so in this case, here's our three sheep, then they are safe from any wolf attacks. So even if a, if a wolf tries to land here, it can't land here because all of these sheep are safe. They're close to each other and they can protect each other. But if a sheep is flanked, this is basically null. So in this case, where we have the gray sheep, a white sheep, and the blue sheep, the way they're flanking this sheep like this, this sheep is exposed and can be eaten. So in this case, say the gray rolls a one and is able to scoot over here, eat this sheep, this sheep is dead because the herd immunity no longer applied when it was flanked. Wolves, when you get bonked, you need to make sure to remember to mark your counters because if you are bonked more than eight times, then your wolf is killed. And it's taken off the board and it's a victory for the shepherd. And that's basically it for herding home. Um, this is version six, uh, the latest version. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you have a lot of fun playing.